So last week we visited the cork tree factory and also uh, the harvesting. So you could see how the bark is taken off and processed in a factory into cork. And we actually used to have three big cork trees on the land ourselves. This one right here, uh, still standing near the bottom yoga deck. This is the only one that didn't burn down. And we used to have two other ones. And here's another cork tree underneath my feet. I'm walking on it right now uh, because it collapsed a few months ago. Makes you realize how big these things are, that you can just really walk on top of them. Um, but here you can see actually how it went. So it got hit by a fire, uh, burned, but kept being alive. But then some windy day, eventually the whole thing did crack and collapse. Which is a shame because it was a very beautiful tree close to base camp. And the third cork tree was actually located right here. But there isn't a tree anymore because we actually used it. And this tree uh, also was burned down, fell on the neighbor land, he dumped it on our land so we could use it. Um, but it was there just rotting away. So last winter we started to process it. So in this video I'm going to show you what we did with it, all the cool things we made. And we're actually also going to bake some bread in our clay made pizza oven. So yeah, welcome to a new Project Camp update. Let's rewind. So the tree has actually already been here for a while. And with winter coming, it slowly starts to rot away even more. Um, so it's a good time to chop it. So we're gonna make some little stools and a little table out of it, hopefully. And we could actually borrow Jan chainsaw, which is super long, so we can really cut through the thick parts. So let's start. a nice selection of wood however I did notice a lot of them already started to rot like here get some mold on it some animals living in there so we might want to uh, scrape off the outer edges to make sure they don't rot anymore the biggest part of the tree and it's quite big like even this big chainsaw as you can see it won't reach all the way uh, so here we can probably make a nice table out of it and these two parts they might look smaller but they also come together here creating probably the biggest piece of it all so uh, yeah let's see if we can chop them down with that small chainsaw And it took quite a while to go through this old dense wood. But we managed to cut out a few good pieces. It's a rough cut and still needs some cleanup. But lifting them up is impossible, way too heavy. So when our neighbor drove by with his front loader on his tractor, we asked for some help. But they were actually also too heavy for lifting with his tractor. So we had another creative way. We dragged out all the pieces that we thought would be somewhat useful, including this burned up piece, potential bench, and here's the heaviest one of them all. We wanted to put them up for a while so they could dry up from that wintry humidity they've been in. And just as a reference to show how big they are, here's one Spanish guy next to a 
cork. And as you see, the cork still has some bark around it. If you want to know about what you can do with that, have a look at our previous video where we visit a place where they harvest and process cork. But the cork isn't that usable anymore, since the bark already started to decompose and became a resource for another species. Many mushrooms and worms in there. It feels bad to take away their house, but it also feels bad seeing all this valuable cork wood rot away. It could still be used for many years. So, after dragging all the pieces in base camp, we let them dry for a while, and after that, ready for cutting. First up, a simple table from this big chunk. Next up, this massive block. And the first step was to take off the bark. And looking at the tape measure, it seems like actually two tables are hidden in there. But we can't cut it like this, so yeah, I guess we just flip it over and cut. Easy. And finally this rough one, a bench, sort of. Well, with a few simple cuts, it could probably be very useful. So after all of this, we also had a few small pieces laying around, so we cut those up as a little pathway to keep your feet clean after the shower. At this point, we're just looking for applications to make sure the car doesn't rot away. So once we cut it a bunch of stuff, now it's time to actually install it all in Basecamp. Let me show you how we are using them right now, a few months later. So this is the final result. Now we have a super cool bench. This bench was chopped down, as you might have seen. Uh, this was a bit sanded and oiled. In front, we have this little table, a living table with some of big mushrooms. Here we can work a bit, drink some tea, whatever, but just being in a space under the shade. But even better, there is this space right here. that is really under the shade, is perfect for meetings. And this again was also super sanded and treated like with some linseed oil um, so that it resists a bit better to the weather. Uh, and Geran created a few beautiful gardens here. We expect in a few years that this is all covered up with jasmine or some climbing plants. And besides all of these places, Tim also created another super beautiful space in this direction, which is right there. So you guys might not really feel, but the temperature is super different. Here there is some breeze and under the shade. This is just the ideal space to have some meetings even better than on the deck because here the shade is from the trees so it really cools down the area uh, this is one of the biggest parts of the cork tree uh, also treated with oil and sanded uh, some hammocks just to enjoy a bit the siestas and when the heat goes up Tim has making some experiments with mimosas and one of the experiments was this I don't know pull up bar I personally wouldn't be able to do it <laughs> and I wouldn't do it but this is a super cool addition also to the land 
and with the leftover bits we create benches all around the camp. This one is a nice one just next to the kitchen with a little heart. Also we chopped a few fine thinner bits that serve as steps. We can go up or we can go down much easier. Just, just follow the path after the shower that actually leads us to the space that we will clean up today. Uh, the cork bench is there or the cork table is there. You will just clear all of this, put some wood chips, ready to go. So this action will be made by Colleen and I. Colleen just arrived, she's a great addition to the team. Hello, I'm Colleen and I'm here for uh, two months and today we're cutting some bushes and uh, removing some uh, nasty spikes. Yes, Let's we go. are. Colleen, yes. what we are doing now? So we cleared out the area, so that means that the soil is very exposed now because we took out of the soil and brambles. So we're gonna put wood chips in it and it will allow the soil to be more conserved, to not be too much in the heat and also to have a comfortable mattress for our little feet when we're re resting. Oh yeah. All good? <laughs> my goodness, this is not terrible. I'm not sure. <laughs> So the space is done, it's super cool now, this will be very shaded during the day, it will be super nice to hang out here. Uh, now we took brambles away and we replaced it with wood chips, so much better for the feet. Uh, we also took out a lot of big wood, big mimosa, and they're at the moment stuck on a big pile. This pile is going to get chopped in pieces and put under the oven. So then when we're going to do the bread, we're going to use those wood. So now we are off because we're going to watch a movie without <laughs> you. <laughs> so yes, we, we should are. go. Bye bye. bye, -bye. And another ongoing project we have here is our research in bread making. Making a bread yourself every now and then isn't too hard, but we're trying to find a way to realistically integrate it in our weekly routine. Baking community amounts and using a wood-fired clay oven. Yeah, it's quite a mission. So we have an ongoing research topic in our module where you can find more information about it. Starting with burnt bread and gradually improving. Let me show you what's the current state of our baking process. Hey, hello, who are you? 
Hello, hi Felix. I'm Ted. I'm uh, from Netherlands. I'm the vegan chef here at Project Camp for about uh, two months. And today we're going to make sourdough bread. And we'll start with the first step. And the first step we'll make a uh, levain. And we'll explain to you what a levain is. Mm. So you came after Agi, right? Yes, I came after Agi. Nice. Okay, cool. Let's start. Um, well, this is the, the starter for the sourdough. So that's a, a culture you, uh, you keep on feeding. Uh, so it becomes wild yeast. Uh, this starter is called Bird, so it has a, has a name, you have to take care of it. Um, and we're gonna yeah, take two scoops of this starter uh, and we're gonna mix it with equal parts of flour and water to make the levain, which will be the, the kickstarter for making the sourdough bread. So that's gonna make sure the sourdough bread is actually gonna ferment and, uh, and leaven. So it doesn't come super precise, but we take about two scoops of sourdough starter. We measure the amount of flour because we want uh, equal parts of flour and, and water. Uh, so it's going to be 100% hydration in your levain. And then after that you're going to play with hydration in your dough. But in the levain you want 100% hydration. So equal parts water and flour. Mm -hmm. Just getting tap water. How long are you gonna wait till you make the dough out of it? Um, so we're gonna let this sit overnight. Um, so it's gonna ferment all the way. It's gonna double in size. Uh, so it's gonna gonna rise uh, and ferment all night. And then tomorrow morning we uh, we can use it. So we have here the starter, already fed, the lavain, and later or tomorrow we're gonna do the dough. Yes, that's it. That's it. So our bird is gonna live inside the fridge again, uh, so we don't need to feed it constantly. So we're gonna let it go to sleep. Uh, so the fermentation, the, the yeast is less active in the, in the starter. So it's gonna go back into the fridge. Uh, so we cover the levain with a wet cloth to, uh, to keep it moist in the, inside the bowl uh, to make sure it doesn't uh, dehydrate during the, during the fermentation process. And we see it tomorrow again. See you tomorrow. So it's the next morning, uh, and we're now uh, have all the components to make our uh, sourdough. Um, so first we have the, the levain that we already made yesterday. Uh, so this uh, fermented overnight and it became a, a lively culture. Uh, next to that, uh, we have our flour, of course. Uh, it contains 80% whole wheat flour and 20% white flour. Uh, we have water uh, and we have, uh, have salt. We're gonna mix all these ingredients together and make one cohesive dough. Um, so let's do it. Okay, so we start with the uh, levain. We mix that in first. Uh, so we're gonna mix in the levain and after that the water to spread the, the yeast throughout the water and make sure it's spread out the dough in the later stage as well. So now we pour in the water. Give it a good stir so that the van mixes in with water. So we can mix in the flour and salt. How much flour is that? This is two and a half kilos of flour. So we'll make four loaves. And it's about 50 grams of salt, so 2% of the weight of the flour. How long it's gonna rest? Um, it's gonna it's gonna rest for four hours. But yeah, I mean normally I would, I would say six to eight hours, but now I think four to five hours with these temperatures because it's 30 degrees plus here, so I would say four to five hours. Okay. 
risen so it's like fluffy you can push it a little bit and it bounces back so we know it's ready We roughly shaped the dough, but we bake them in baking trays so they don't need to be shaped that much. But you do want to build up a little bit of tension in the top part of the of the dough, so it will rise better once it's in the oven. Okay. Ready to be baked. And some water? Yeah, some water to create some steam so they don't directly seal um, the crust doesn't directly form How long do they bake? Uh, they bake about 45 minutes uh, normally but with this oven it's always a little bit yeah you have to see a little bit and see how they develop take them out see whether they're good so 45 minutes at least I would say but maybe up to an hour <laughs> Alright, so that was it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. If you already want to see the next video, make sure to support on Patreon or not. And we'll just see you again next week. Same time, same channel. Bye.